Now we will see the electric field due to the uniformly charged spherical shell. So what is that spherical shell? So it is nothing but the shape of your bangle. So just assume that now I'm having this spherical shell. So let this is your spherical shell and on which the charge Q is distributed uniformly. So let consider the first case where I'm going to find the electric field outside the shell. Let the distance of that outside point is P which is at a distance R where you have to find the electric field intensity. So I just discussed that. So while finding that electric field, you have to use that Gauss law and to just use that Gauss law first, you need to select that Gaussian surface. So there are different conditions that we have discussed about that your Gaussian surface. So I will just consider the symmetrical surface, which is nothing but the circle around this your spherical shell. So I just consider this dotted your Gaussian surface. Now to just prove that Gauss law to find the electric field, I will write down that Gauss law, which states that the flux passing through any closed surface is equals to the total charge enclosed by that your surface. So which is one upon epsilon naught into Q. So if I select this point P, draw this your imaginary sphere. Now this E is same everywhere on that your sphere or on that surface. So that E is constant. Again, if I consider the integration of that your ds bar, which you have to find. So which is nothing but 4 pi r square since that radius is smaller. So E into 4 pi r square, which is equals to Q upon epsilon naught. Again, you can write down that E, which is nothing but Q upon your 4 pi epsilon naught r square. So that is the expression for your electric field due to the spherical shell and mainly it is outside the spherical shell. So we are considering the distance r which is greater than the radius of that shell. So that is the condition where you can find the electric field where r is greater than that your capital R. So now just we have proved this your outside the shell. So next we have to consider what is the electric field inside the shell. So again for that select the Gaussian surface. So I consider this point P the radius of this your spherical shell is capital R. So obviously in this case your R is less than that capital R. So the charge is actually distributed on its surface. So again use the condition of your Gauss law. According to the statement of your Gauss law, we are saying that E bar dot ds bar, which is equals to one upon epsilon naught times that is Q. Then, so again that E is same at every point on that imaginary sphere. So E is constant. Again, that ds is also your four pi r square is equals to Q upon epsilon naught. But in this case, the value of your charge that is enclosed by that your surface is zero. Actually, the charge is outside that imaginary sphere. There is no charge inside that sphere. So Q is zero. So obviously you will get the value of E is equals to zero inside that your spherical shell because it doesn't contain any charge over there. So that was the two cases where you can find the electric field intensity outside the shell or you can find the inside shell. So with the help of that, you can draw this graph, the variation of electric field intensity versus that distance. You can see from this graph inside the shell, it is zero and outside it is inversely proportional to R square. So you can write down that outside the shell, it is inversely proportional to R square. So this is how you can represent it with the help of graph.